Hey, what's up everyone? It is Jane from the Game Busters UK and I felt like I should do a video on this. So, for those of you who don't know, Sony has basically announced uh, the new PlayStation Classic or PlayStation Classic Mini um, that's coming out, I believe, December 3rd. Now, first off, the PlayStation is my favourite console of all time, for those of you who don't know. But 90 pounds? No. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the PlayStation, but I, I feel like 90 pounds is a lot of money. So, um, at the moment, it includes five games. It's planned to have 20 already built in. Uh, and it says 20 of the best like sold games I guess on the PlayStation it just says the best games on the system we're not sure what that is we can only assume there's not going to be like average games on there or average platformers or underrated platformers which is going to be a shame um, it has HDMI support which is cool because uh, which means I could probably record it off my Elgato uh, so that would be cool um, I'm not sure you know I mean the PlayStation 1 was never HDMI you know it was never HD so I don't know if it really affect the quality too much but it's still kind of neat that it has that obviously because most people are going to have HD TVs like myself I have an HD TV you know so naturally it's it's good that they've done that obviously they're following the same sort of path as Nintendo with the NES classic and the Super Nintendo classic so I suppose it was only a matter of time uh, before Sony jumped on the, the bandwagon but yeah the, the only thing Really, that's holding me back is the price. Um, I don't actually have the original PlayStation anymore because Kid J was not very good at taking care of his games or consoles when he was younger. And so uh, I can't remember what happened, but I probably broke it and so I threw it away when I was younger at some point. Um, I have my PS2, I have my PS3. Uh, I've had to buy like three different PS2s, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, I've had a PS3. It's still the original, well not the original, it's not the fat one unfortunately, so it can't play a PS2 game, sad face. I really want that one, but no, it's the slim one, or the slimish one, it's so, so bloody bulky honestly. Uh, and my PlayStation 4, my Batman Arkham Knight PlayStation 4, which I still love the design of. Just a regular, not PS4 Pro. Uh, so, I mean, I would like to just have it, it'd be cool. Um, especially like, because it's a mini, I can kind of take it with me perhaps. Not that I really go anywhere, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not quite the Switch, but you get you get what I'm saying. Um, and honestly, I just wanted to do a video on what my dream 20 games would be for the system. Now, this list isn't going to be a, oh, my, like my best 20 games, like my favorite 20 PlayStation 1 games, which is actually kind of difficult to make. There are quite a few PlayStation 1 games I've played, but there are so many I haven't. And one day, I wouldn't mind just owning like all the PlayStation 1 games. Like, I don't have the room for it. I'm talking about something that's later on when I'm, you know, actually got like a decent amount of money. Eventually, I'd like to collect all the PlayStation 1 games, and I don't know if I'd review them all, but I'd definitely try them all at some point eventually. Uh, but this, this is going to be a mixture of games I like, games I think should be on the system, games perhaps I've never played and only heard of and would like to give it a try. Um, and shout out to Kedicarus, the YouTuber. Basically, he created a similar list and he decided to restrict himself to one game of the series. So I'm going to do the same just because why not? I thought it would be a challenge, it's actually quite difficult. Um, and I'll probably like mention like certain games I've chosen and then like what I probably would have replaced if I kept it to like a series. But I'm going to try and keep it to one game per series. Uh, and some choices I think will surprise you. Now if you guys want to do this you can in the comment section below. You don't have to restrict yourself. But this is what I'm going to do. So without further ado, let's get on with the favourites, shall we say. Spyro Year of the Dragon. Just checking to see if I was actually recording there, but I am. It is my favourite Spyro game to date. Now, I don't really have a problem with two or one. I, I honestly think both of them are really solid. Uh, and I hear a lot of two uh, favourites. Sometimes uh, one is a favourite of other people's. I feel like Spyro 3 just kind of works off of Spyro 2 but makes things better. I was never a big fan of 
um, the power-ups in Spyro 2 where you'd attack the enemy and they'd have like these spirit particle things. I, I never liked that. I preferred that enemies dropped gems and thank god Year of the Dragon went back to that from Spyro 1. Um, it's got so much charm. The gameplay is fun. You've got all the abilities from Spyro 2. You don't have to like go back to money bags and rebuy them again. So, you know, you're already like decked out. Spyro's decked out as best way you can. Le the level variety is great. They're fun. The speedways are fun. Most of the mini games are fun. Uh, most of the bosses are quite intimidating. Not particularly hard, but they're, you know, they're actually quite intimidating. So I used to like the, the, uh, the monstery, monstrous, I guess you could say, the monstrous uh, design that, uh, you know, the sorcerer was going for. Even though I, I personally don't think the sorcerer is that great of a villain. But there you go. You know, it is what it is. But overall, like, I love the characters, personalities. Maybe not all the gameplays. Uh, but, um, yeah, like, it's still my favourite. Spyro Dragon is still my favourite game. So, naturally, I would want it on the system. Yeah. Next up, we have to follow Spyro with none other than the Orange Masupian, Crash Bandicoot. But I'm going to throw you off a little bit. Crash Bandicoot Warped is my favourite Crash Bandicoot game. But Crash Team Racing is my cart, my favorite cart game. My cart, my favorite cart game. So I'm actually gonna go with this. Now the reason why is mainly because I think the console obviously should have some variety. And I'm not a big racer, but I'm into my cart races. Essentially, I grew up with my PlayStation. I didn't have a Nintendo. I never experienced Mario Kart until much, 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 much later. Um, so I had CTR. And I loved it. It was great. I had so much fun playing the single campaign. I had so many laughs with my friends uh, playing that game. God, trying to get multi-tap to work on your PlayStation 1 though. <laughs> that was that was a doozy. I just have so many fun memories of the game. The game is great. I love it. I mean, if you like Mario Kart, you can you can like Crash, you know, Crash Team Race, and you don't have to particularly be interested in Crash Bandicoot all the franchise per se you, you know it's just it's just a fun you know multiplayer kart game to play with your friends the music the sounds the levels the controls i love everything about crash team racing so i want it to be different and i'm actually going to choose crash team racing for my crash bandicoot representative so yeah i want it to be a little bit different of variety there and it's a great it's a great kart racer game it's a great party game to play with your friends so yeah, if you're gonna put any, like, if they put, say, Crash Bandicoot 3 or 2, I don't care. Like, Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3 are fantastic games. If they put one on, though, I'd be like, mmm, probably not the best. So I feel like if they're gonna choose any, it's probably gonna be 2 or 3. But you never know, we might get CTR on there, um, and that would be awesome. The next up, again, which might throw people off, maybe not. Um, I talk about this as a somewhat underrated game. Um, but it's mainly due to the fact that people don't like it so much because it's a very, very hard game. But it started off the franchise. And I think one of the most beautiful 2D games I've ever played. And that is Rayman 1 for the PlayStation 1. Now, I believe Rayman 1 did get, like, PC ports. There's Rayman, Ray, Rayman, Rayman Gold. Um, and I think there's, like, this Rayman level creator or something. Um, I actually wish I could have owned that, because that sounded like it would have been really cool to create your own levels and Rain Man and stuff. But other than that, I believe it, the original was on the PlayStation 1. I think there might have been a port somewhere else. I'm not too sure. I feel like, like in my head, there might be like a Game Boy Advance port or something. Actually, I think there was. Something like that. And you might even go to say, like, why didn't I choose Rain Man 2? Like, I think Rain Man 2 is the better game. Um, you know, it's got decent difficulty. Uh, but it's not like ridiculously hard. The gameplay is fun. But honestly, Ray Rayman 2 is on everything. And I grew up with the PlayStation version. It's probably the weakest version. But I grew up with that. I think it's fine personally. Rayman 2 is on everything. And it's like... It's the better game. And if they're going to choose any, they'll probably choose Rayman 2. But I feel like it doesn't need to be on... <sighs> well... I mean, it does and it doesn't. You know what I mean? Rayman Ray 2 because Rayman 2 is on everything, Rayman 1 isn't. I feel like, well, give some appreciation to the original. I know it's not everyone's favourite. People don't like it mainly because it's a very difficult game. But it, it has that charm. It's kind of how I feel like with Crocodile de Gobos. Crocodile de Gobos is a tanky, janky game. It's kind of average, but it has potential. 
it had a lot of charm and that's why I still wished like there was a croc free where they could have improved it or if someone tried to revitalize croc and bring him back and do a remaster or something and just make him better i feel like rayman has a lot of charm like i said it's such a pretty game the environment you go to you've got your you know your typical jungle foresty land you've got uh the band land which is all made up of instruments then you've got like the snowy mountains you've got picture city which is all about like painting and drawing so you've got pencils rubbers paint brushes you know ink different things like that literally the background looks like someone has painted it it's all colorful and stuff you know it's like a children's it's like a children's color on book it's so pretty um and then you've got the you know the dark caves of mr scopes um and then to end it off you basically got Candyland. you know the whole world's full of cakes and chocolates and caramel and it's such a you know it is a kid's game like it looks like a kid's game but it's it's too hard for a kid. Does that make sense? I guess like back in the day, PlayStation kind of play, PlayStation kind of had that thing where their type of difficulty was well, we can't make the game much longer because of probably disc, disc space, unless you want to do Final Fantasy and have like two discs for the game, I suppose. Um, so let's cram it all in on one disc. But how are we going to make it longer? We'll make it really difficult so the kids can't beat it overnight. But then they made it too difficult. That's kind of how I see it. I still enjoy the gameplay. I still think Rayman is a fun 2D game. It's kind of slow paced and is difficult. It does pick up when you get the ability to run. Uh, but it's got a lot of charm. There's so much life in the game. The characters, the intro. Like even when you start the first world. You've got like the plants and the flowers are like almost look like they're they're shaking like they're shaking and they're like dancing about with the music. The music. Can I like can I praise the music anymore? Music is amazing. I love the soundtrack to Rain Man. Like there's some like super duper like catchy themes and there's just some you know atmospheric themes. It all just sounds great <laughs> it really does um you know and i love the quirky designs of of the rayman characters and rayman himself again it's got a lot of charm people are probably going to choose rayman too and i understand that but again it's like it's on everything you know so i feel like rayman one should maybe give you know a bit more appreciation and uh i wish ubisoft would uh make another rayman game hurry up 3d one please do it do it now of course i could not have a playstation list a dream list without my favorite digimon game it is digimon world one what can i say about this game i think i like it because honestly it was different to your typical rpgs i mean granted it was the first game i ever played as well but it's not your turn-paced rpg where you know you take turns and you level up via experience points no, it's literally the original Tamagotchi. You take care of your Digimon. You know, you, you pet them, you scold them when you need to discipline them. You feed them, you take them to the toilet, you put them to sleep. Uh, all the while training them, making them stronger to try and get the stats that you want so that you can um, digivolve to your champions and your ultimates and then you can, you know, lay waste to the other Digimon. Uh, you know, the, the characters, the environments, the areas that you go to. Um, it's just, man, like, it's it's an adventure. And it's, Digimon World is just, I guess, kind of what I think when I want to play a Digimon type game. You get sent to the digital world, you're this tamer, and you get to raise your Digimon and just explore the digital world and in different areas, um, you know, and challenge yourself fighting strong opponents. That's what I think when I think of Digimon. And... It's still my favorite and I know we have a sequel which is Digimon World Next Order and it is a great game but I still wish that they would like remaster the original game. I really wish they would. I know they, they're not going to but I had to include it. It's my favorite Digimon World game. So yeah Digimon World definitely I'd love it to be on there. I really doubt it will be but that's my that's my choice. Now next one uh, which is something I don't really talk about too much. But it's another great multiplayer type party game. Who knew that War Between Worms would be so much fun? I've gone with Worms Armageddon. 
Now, Worms Armageddon, I believe, was also on PC, and I hear that was a superior version. Naturally, you can do more with the PC. You can do more environmental stuff, because the PlayStation was kind of lacking. But uh, it's also on Steam right now, so you can actually play it on Steam. But I decided to go with it again for something different um, and variety. And honestly, like, I, I had the PlayStation 1 version. I didn't have the PC version. I didn't even know there was a PC version until I was older. And, you know, me and my friends had so much fun just blowing each other up. You know, these tiny worms holding big bazookas and grenades and blooming Uzi guns and whatnot. And uh, and then you've got like the whole like fire punch, you know, put the bandana on and then you do like a like a sure you can like again, who knew that like war between worms would be so much fun, you know, blowing up the environment. And even if you screw up and like throw a holy hand grenade at your own teammate right yourself and you and you blow yourself up and your worm goes flying into the water you still find it funny like you can't help but laugh it is hilarious the voices they make because you can you can name your characters whatever you want you can change the different voices and whatnot it is just a barrel of fun if you've never played a worms game and you want a multiplayer game that's really fun and easy to play play worms armageddon get it on steam if you can um, I would consider it to be one of the best Worms games in the entire series. Uh, it seems to be quite popular from what I see. I know a lot of people agree with me on that. It's it's great fun. It really is great fun. Um, it would be awesome if it would be on there. So yeah, Worms Armageddon. Now another, what I think, classic, but very underrated. It's one of those, you know, this kind of slipped under the radar because certain other franchise, or s certain other game in, the, in, in, in like the set from the same company were kind of more popular final fantasy but i want brave fence and musashi brave fence and musashi is a square game uh and i think i heard to believe like it it, it it came with like maybe final fantasy 8 as a demo or something like that or included with or something like that it's such a different game but it has so much charm it's funny because i can never really get into final fantasy games that well but Brave Fence and Musashi, I mean, it isn't a Final Fantasy game. You're playing as this legendary warrior or the descendant of the legendary warrior, Musashi. When these people summon him because they need his help, he's just like a little bratty kid who's very arrogant and stuff. But you find out, even though he is like this, he is surprisingly really strong. And I guess he really is a descendant. And you have these two swords. You have Fusion and you have Lumina. And you're basically just trying to save the kingdom from being taken over from this evil corporation. There's always an evil corporation, um, you know, which they eventually kidnap the princess. And, like, I love Musashi's character. He's a funny character. You know, he's, he doesn't, like, he's, like, it's like, it's like insulting people, but, like, not swearing. You know what I mean? Like, he's, like, he calls... Like the old people, he calls him an old geezer, and some some people get like offended, and like the princess at the beginning calls him a little turd for being rude. So he is such a bratty kid, but I love his personality. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, I love all the characters' personalities and how they act and, and and talk. They all have interesting names. I believe like the village, uh, well not the village, the the castle, the, the inhabitants of the castle. Um, I think they like. All their names are based off of like food puns. Shoutouts to another YouTuber, The Completionist. He uh, did a Completionist video recently on Brave and Mustache, showing his love and appreciation for the game. And it's great that he likes that game because I think he, he might have did a video before, but I didn't see it because um, I didn't like subscribe to him. I didn't even know about him until like much later on when I was older and stuff. So yeah, he just kind of summed up how underappreciated that game is. It's like an action adventure type of game. Um, let's say you've got two swords. Uh, I believe Fusion's the one where you can assimilate, if I remember correctly, and like take uh, different enemies' abilities and do different things. Uh, like sometimes you get the ability to shoot, uh, so you can throw projectiles. You get another one where you can like bounce for a little bit on your sword and avoid like different environment areas, like lava and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's it's. I feel like it's such an underappreciated game because at the time Final Fantasy was a thing, and it was like, huh, there's this other game neat um and i really wish people would play it more if they could so i'd love it to be on there i really would but let's be honest final fantasy 7 is part of the you know already five games so like that squares representative so i don't see them putting brave fence and musashi i can only hope but it's 
it's a fun adventure. It's a very, very, very long game, but I honestly think if you like like adventure action type games, you know, the combat's very system, if very system, very simple. Uh, you know, you're mainly mashing square most of the time when he does like a little slash combo while every now and again you'll like, uh, you know, use the other sword Lumina to do certain other things and whatnot. You also get like these crest abilities um, which enables you to get unique elemental uh, attacks and stuff like that to do different things, uh, you know, with puzzle solving and whatnot. It's, it's such a, such a, like it's a serious game but it's also very goofy and funny, you know. Um, it's got a lot of charm, and yeah, that's my choice. Now, I've got a game that I've never played before fully. I've never played the real game before, but I remember having fond memories of the demo. And that game is, I believe, Tumba 2. There is Tumba 1 and there is Tumba 2, but I think it was Tumba 2 is the demo I played. It was years ago. Uh, you like play as this, like, monkey boy. He's a, like, really pink hair. It looks very Japanese. Um, like, all the characters are very Japanese. Um, like, anime type of style. Like, I'm talking, like, old. Like, like old anime type of style. Yeah, I remember it just being very... Very charming, uh, like it's, it's, a, it's a like very pretty like game. It is pretty fun. I don't know if Tumba. I feel like Tumba probably is an underrated platforming, like platforming adventure type game. Um, I only really remember just running around and like swinging on vines, like on Tarzan. Well, not vines, but like more like swinging on branches, I guess, um, and and doing different flips and stuff. He's very like Tumba's very, he's very acrobatic from what I remember. Um, there wasn't really much that I played, and my memory on the game is very vague. I'd like to just play it again, uh, but like fully. I'd like to play the game fully, because I've never done that. I don't know if it's actually on the PlayStation Store, I don't know. Again, like, if I'm going to choose games that are not from the same franchise, you know, I had to think about it. I was like, you know what, I've not fully played Tomb 2, and I really want to play it. Like, I want to experience it. I want to see if, like, the, the whole game holds up. You know, because I remember having fond memories of that demo playing it over and over again. So I want to experience the full game. So yeah, it'd be great if it was on it. Now another game that might throw you off a little bit. I've never played a game in this entire series. But I hear good things about it. And honestly, I, I just want to play it. I want to give it a go. And that is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah, I've never played a Castlevania game because I never grew up in Nintendo, like I said. Uh, and I never knew about Castlevania until I was older. I didn't even know there was a PS1 Castlevania game when I was younger. None of my friends had one or talked about anyone. And when I met Mark, he, he would like talk about the Castle Castlevania 2 and things like that. So I didn't even know about it until I was much older. Um, and I've seen like videos of of the game and people playing it and talking about it and honestly I feel like I would really like playing the Castlevania series and Symphony of the Night looks like a fantastic game that I could get into so I'd like to just put it on there because it I want to play it I want to give it a go I've never played it before like I said I hear people sing its praises people saying it's like one of the best Castlevania games it's highly recommended if you have a PS1 so yeah like I can see why at least from what I see, I'd like to experience it to see if I really would like it because who knows, I could play it and it might not be as good as I think it is personally, but I won't know unless I try. So it'd be great to have it on there um, just to see what all the hype's all about about that game, I suppose. Yeah. Now, this game is actually part of the original five that have been announced. I already talked about a certain Brave Fence and Musashi from Square. Um, and this game is Final Fantasy 7. Now the reason why I say this is on here because I've never beaten Final Fantasy 7 the original. I've beaten Crisis Core on the PSP. Um, again, I could I always struggle with Final Fantasy 7 games. There's always something that turns me off. Like I get far and then I just I don't finish it. I've never properly finished one except for Crisis Core, unless you count the Decidia games, I guess. The PSP ones anyway. So I I would like to play it just to try and beat it one day, the original Final Fantasy 7, because I really like Crisis Core. And I feel like when you're talking about uh, at least PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy, I mean, there, there people probably say maybe 8 or 9 is better, but I feel like most people would be like, oh yeah, Final Fantasy 7, and what do you think of Final Fantasy 7? You think, oh, Cloud. I feel like it's pretty iconic. 
so I feel like he should be on there out of right. Like, I kind of feel like Crash should definitely be on there out of right, Spyro should be out of right. You think of those characters when you think of PlayStation 1, and I feel like Cloud is definitely up there. He, you think of him in terms of RPGs, uh, you know, when it comes to the PlayStation 1. So, whether he's the better game or not, well, he's the better game. Whether Final Fantasy 7 is the better game or not, um, I feel like he's iconic enough, it makes sense for him to be on there. So that's kind of why I think he should be on there. Um, and I'd honestly just like to give the game another chance. Now a game I definitely think is underrated, uh, an action uh, action RPG, action role playing game, um, that uh, I've experienced in the past a little bit. Um, I liked what I played, I liked it enough to get the second of the series, uh, Lagaya 2, Legend of Lagaya for the PlayStation 1. Now, the reason why I say it's unique is because it's not your typical game where you have like your attack and then like you have like your spells and stuff like Final Fantasy VII. No, it's more like a fighting game that you, you input commands, you press the buttons and then you press start and then you just watch the, watch the player do his attacks. Like literally you will press like up and your, and, and your player will do an uppercut or you'll press down and they might do like a leg sweep. Uh, and you have to factor all this stuff, like, you could do, like, an uppercut to maybe, um, stun the opponent or send them flying, and then you could do combos and do more damage, or perhaps they're wearing body armor, so don't attack them straight on, attack them in the leg, or attack them on the side of their arm or something, uh, to do more damage, things like that. So it's very interesting, and like I said, you can do various different combos with each character, uh, to see what you get, and I always had fun just messing around and seeing what combos I can do, and you know, we'll see what worked, see what didn't. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like a, a fighting, kind of like a fighting similar in a simulator in a way, where like let's say you input the combos, and then you just you see what happens, um, and you get like different abilities and whatnot. Look, look I too, I know you have like these spirits where they all have like depending on the character, you have like different abilities. Like someone's like a healer, another person has like earth abilities, another person has like water abilities and things like that. Um, so I liked it because it was so different and unique. I had a lot of fun with the fighting, you know, with the with the with the fighting system, the RPG system in the game. Um, and it, I also remember, you know, quite liking the characters uh, as well. So I don't think it's super popular, but I do feel like it's a very underrated game. Do I think it would be on the system? No. I'd like it to be on it though, just because I haven't played it in years and I want to play it again. I just had so much fun with the uh, the way the combat was. I enjoyed you know getting into battles and stuff because it was so much fun uh playing a very unique styled gameplay that was you know 100 different to other rpgs so legend of lagaya i'd love to have that on the system back to platformers because i mean i'm a platformer guy if anyone knows i'm like platformers are my number one games to go to Followed by RPGs, I would say. I'd say platformers and RPGs. Uh, and then, I guess, kind of like action, adventure, slash, hack and slash. Um, and then, like, maybe fighting games or puzzle games or something like that. But uh, platformers are kind of like my top thing. And since, again, I'm keeping to one game per series, I went with something that was maybe slightly above average, but not like a super amazing platformer. But still, I liked what it was for what it is. And that is Pac-Man World for the PlayStation 1. This is the first 3D Pac-Man game. At least as far as I know, at least on console anyway. Uh, like full, full proper, you know, moving around analog control, 360 and all that jazz. And honestly, I played the demo so many times before I eventually got the game. And I, I had lots of fun. I remember it being the circus level on the demo. I wasn't very good at it, and it can be, it can get kind of difficult at times. But overall, I think Pac-Man World is a solid game. It is a solid, fun game. Uh, I really enjoyed the music and the different areas. The only thing I didn't like particularly is some of the bosses. Well, specifically the second boss was kind of trash. But again, it's not like a super amazing game. Do I think it's going to be on the system? No. Um, but like I said, considering I'm limiting myself for a challenge, I figured why not put like an average-ish game, you know, like I feel like you can enjoy it for what it is. It's not like Croc, much as I say, say this because I, you know, I love Croc, but like, 
I would say Pac-Man World probably is a better game than Croc. It controls better. It's not as hard, in my opinion. Um, eh, 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 debatable. They both got goods. They got some got some bads. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay, I need to think of a game that I haven't played because there are a lot of other platform games, like average E type games, that I've not played uh, on the system. Unfortunately, one of the, one of the terrible ones that I have played as well as you do. But yeah, let's put that on the system. Yeah, no. But um, yeah, so I decided to go with Pac-Man World because it's the one that you know I know I have and I've played. So, something different, Pac-Man World, why not? Here comes another very odd choice for people who know me. I don't really play racing games. I play kart games, I don't really play racing games. I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a kart person, I'm not really into it. Uh, this game isn't really a kart, it's kind of like a little ship thing that you fly around. Now, the reason why I'm choosing this game is, again, I remember playing the demo of this game. I think it was the third one in the series. And I ended up liking it. So it's one of those things where why not have a bit of variety, you know, let's not all be platformers. Have a bit of racing games in there. And if it's not CTR, then I guess this because I remember enjoying the demo. Wipeout free. Yeah, um I remember playing it a lot. Um sucking very badly is the I think the announcer is literally saying, Wipeout and I'm like, well, alright. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. That's the name of the game. Yes, but I just remember playing the demo over and over and over again. Man, I miss, I miss, I miss demo discs. I really do. So that's really it. I don't remember much. Just it's one of those things where when I when I think of Wipeout, I'm like, you know what? I remember playing the demo. So yeah, I haven't played it in years because you know I never owned it. So why not? Put it on the system. I'd give it a go. Moving on to another game franchise that I feel like it's one of those things where you think of the PlayStation 1 and you definitely think of this female character. If there was ever a female mascot perhaps for the system, it would have to be Lara Croft. And I'm going to go with Tomb Raider 2. Now the reason why I went with Tomb Raider 2 is because it's the first Tomb Raider 2 I ever Tomb Raider 2 I ever played. First Tomb Raider game I ever played on the system. I believe there's one and three and there might be another one. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm sure Footloose will be able to tell me because he's the Tomb Raider guy. I suck at Tomb Raider games so I don't play them. Simple as. Um, well at least I've not played the new ones but I tried getting into two and three and I, I just couldn't. Like I sucked. Like I literally couldn't get past the first area of the game with like the tiger right, right at the beginning. I'm that bad at the game. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't think I can adjust myself with the tank controls. Some people say it works for Lara. Like the type of game it works. You can get used to it. I, I couldn't get into it. I was terrible at the game. But I feel like by right. She was quite iconic on the system. And again I feel like. You know. She's another character you think of. When you think of the PlayStation 1. So I think by right she should be on there. Whether I'm good at the game. Or bad at the game. Or whether I like it or not. I feel like she has the right to be on there so yeah i feel like people would like her to be on the system i'm not sure if they prefer three or one i don't know um but i'm gonna go with two just because it's the one that i remember the most and the first game i ever played so yeah tomb raider 2 now this is gonna be a really like what the hell jay really i never thought you would have suggested this i hear people talk about this a lot but again we're talking about variety and it's not all just about the, the games that i like games I can't get into. I can't really get into horror games. I think May is just because I'm a chicken shit. Um, they don't really particularly appeal to me. But um, I feel like people would appreciate this and I can see them putting this on the system or at least one of them because I hear it's one of the best selling games on the system. Resident Evil. Yeah. Resident Evil. I've never played a Resident Evil game. Will I ever play one? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe put it on the system and force me to play if I get the system. I'm not getting it at 90 quid, I'm sorry. You have to make it cheaper, Sony. So, I don't know. But <laughs> I hear people talk about it a lot. I've heard they talk about it a lot. People say the Resident Evil series on PS1 um, are great. Some people say they're kind of underrated because they've aged and stuff. Um, I hear people talk about 2 and 3, not so much 1. If not, it's 4. Uh, so, I guess either of them. I don't really care because I have no opinion on the system, but I feel like, why not? you got to have variety on there. So, put Resident Evil, because I hear a lot of people 
you know, like it. If not, maybe Silent Hill, I guess. But um, I'm more familiar with... Well, I say more familiar with, with Resident Evil. I feel like Resident Evil might be the more popular game. I don't really know. Uh, so if we're going to put, like, a horror game on there, you know, for variety's sake, I can see Resident Evil because people love the franchise and people really love the, the, the PlayStation 1 games. So that's why I think it should be on there. And I, I guess you could consider thinking that Resident Evil is somewhat iconic on the PlayStation. So yeah, why not? Put it on there. Uh, either one, I don't know. Oh, and next game, if my throat doesn't die on me, um, is another game I have not played. Uh, Jamie loves this game. Um, I think for, it's like this game, I'm not sure. But I know Jamie loves this game. I know a lot of people put it high praise. People put this as like their favourite PlayStation 1 game of all time. It is rated high um, for really pushing out the series. And that is Metal Gear Solid. I figured, yeah, I think Metal Gear Solid is iconic for PlayStation 1. So, I've never played it because it doesn't seem like to be the type of game that I would like. But who knows, maybe one day I'll play it. But again, another game should be on the system. You think of Metal Gear Solid in my opinion. You think of the stealthiness. You think of Solid Snake. Makes sense to me to put it on the system. I'm not even going to be offended. You know, if you put on a game that I'm probably not going to play. If I think it's a good game just because, you know, it's like, I can appreciate a game being good, but it just might not be my type of game. You know, not necessarily it's a bad game just because it's not my type of game. I'm not going to say, oh, this is a bad first person shooter. I'm going to be like, no, I just don't like first person shooters. It might be a good first person shooter, but I'm just not into the series. I don't like it. Um, so, yeah, I feel like Metal Gear Solid has to be on there. People love the, love, love the series, people uh, love the first game. Uh, so to me, I feel like, the, you know, definitely being iconic, once again, it has to be on there. Nothing else for, really, for, more, for me to say because I've never played the game. Um, so yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Put it on there. Back to a game I do like and definitely okay with playing. Um, and definitely something I can get into is... Uh, the Charm of Oddworld. Um, now, I'm not sure which one to put on here. You can put Abe's Odyssey or Exodus. Um, I've never actually beat Exodus. Uh, I, I beat Odyssey eventually, but I never beat Exodus. The, both games are really hard, but I do have both of them. And, you know, it's funny I have more fond memories of Exodus because I remember controlling the fart, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious. Um, I was never good at the game, but... Um, I just remember different things like that, and I remember like getting your friends, uh, your friends were like drinking that 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 dodgy dodgy drink, and then they all get sick and stuff. Like it's like they're literally drunk. I remember that game, and yeah, man, it's a great game in the in the system. It's hard, but it's it's still a fantastic game. It has a lot of charm. It's a charm. It's hilarious. It's also kind of a horror -y type dark. Like people die, man. They want to kill Abe and. The Madakans, there's shootings and everything. Like, the amount of deaths you get. Like, Abe gets mauled, crushed. His, like, Madakan friends get mincemeat and stuff. Like, it's actually quite crazy. But, it's all, I guess it's all part of the charm. <laughs> it's all part of the charm. Oh, man. No, I feel like, I feel like one of the games in the series definitely have to be on there. Um... Definitely. I have <laughs> somewhat fun memories of the game. It just makes me laugh thinking about it because it's it's a game you can laugh at. It's like, oh, Oddworld's great fun. And, you know, yeah, we need great fun. So put it on the system. Yeah. Now, here's a game I've once again only experienced, not via demo, but via my friend. Shout outs to my friend Leon. Um, he had this game back in the day. I don't know if he still has it. Uh, but I remember briefly playing it and struggling, but from what I joy, from what I, from what I played, I enjoyed what I played. And that was, uh, Alandra 2. Now, there is a Alandra 1 game that I've never played, but I've played Alandra 2. Like, full 3D models. Um, it's another action role-playing game. And the only memory I have is, like, this minotaur boss or something that you're trying to defeat and like every now and again i think it'll like roll up into a ball and try to charge into you and stuff i sucked at it but it was a lot of fun the the, the kind of like hack and slashy type combat system and whatnot um again i think it's an underrated action role-playing type game 
so uh, I'd definitely put it on there. It's very like it looks very polygony, um, like Final Fantasy type of thing, adventure type game. So I would like to experience it fully instead of just my fond memories of playing it around my friend's house when I was like eight years old, eight or nine years old. I'm so surprised I remember to be honest, but <laughs> I'd like to experience the full game to see if I can enjoy it, kind of like with Tumblr 2 and stuff like that. So yeah, why not? I'd like to experience this game again, so put it on there. Alandra 2. Now here's a like, I don't know if it's a real like, I don't know if it's like a real like a, uh, you know, hey, like I wasn't expecting that from you. I feel like I've already said that with Resident Evil and like the yeah, Metal Gear Solid um but um mention how I don't really like racing games well we need variety and I was struggling for the last two games to choose um so I just decided to go with this because I've actually played this game and I remember playing it a lot when I was younger for some reason maybe that's the reason why I don't play racing games anymore I don't know it's Ridge Racer Type 4, and this game is actually already part of the list, so I feel like they should keep it on there. Um, I hear that Ridge Racer Type 4 is one of the most popular of the series, and I hear a lot of people say it might be the best even now. I just remember the cover and like the woman on, like the, the, the woman, I think she's like wearing like a white outfit, like white outfit, and I guess she's like the flag presenter girl or whatever, I guess. And I remember not being very good at the game, but I don't know, I played it a lot when I was a kid, so why not put it on the system? I'd like to just play it again to see what I think now as an adult, to be honest, even though I'm not really big into racing games. But, uh, you know, variety. Variety. That's how I'm seeing it. It's like variety, and if most people do prefer this game, and, you know, they think it's like one of the best, then yeah, sure, put it on there. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a... Again, a bit of a, ha, huh, I wasn't expecting that from Jay, unless you don't know me, obviously. But, yeah, why not? Put Ridge Racer on there. Ridge Racer Type 4. Now we're on to 19. My throat is literally drying, drying out now. I literally feel like it's got sand in it right now. It's not good. Um, a game I've never played at all. No demo or anything. I've just looked at it and I was like, it's a 3D platformer. Looks charming. I love been using that a lot. Um, looks like it'd be a lot of fun. You know, like a kiddie, kiddie type platformer. 3D, 3D type platformer. And A is Cloner. I think there's like maybe a few few kind of games on the PlayStation 1. I'm not sure which the best one is, but just choose the best one, I guess. Um, I've looked at it before, and I was like, it's... I think he's like another kind of like furry mascot type of thing. Maybe a bit underrated, maybe not as good as Crash or Spyro. But um, it looks like I could have a lot of fun with this game. Um, and I'd like to experience I've never experienced it before. I've only seen gameplay footage. Um, from what I hear people talk about it, they say it's a good game. It's a decent game. I don't hear it like being up there with like Crash and Sonic and Spyro and you like well I'm talking about other fairy protagonists or just 3D games in general like Mario. Um, so I feel like maybe it's a bit lower on the perspective. But I hear people say it's a decent game, so why not? We need more platformers. And you know, um, I was going to mention the Pac-Man world, but like if I was talking about a series, I'd probably replace Pac-Man world with like Warped, and then maybe like Cloner with like Spyro 2, just because I I've played those games, I know they're great, but I technically have those games anyway, and I've never played Cloner, so I want to play a new platformer for me. It's something I haven't played, so put Cloner on there. Why not? I want to give it a shot. And last but not least, another game I've never played. A game that had announced a remaster that we haven't heard in a very long time. And I'm sure uh, medieval fans are really upset as well as Footloose. And of course it is medieval. Uh, I guess one, because there's medieval one and two, right? Both on the PlayStation. Like, I'm not sure what happened with the whole remaster thing. Don't know. I guess we assume it's still happening. I'm not really sure. I feel bad for them. I really do. Especially, like, consider Crash and Spyro. Like, they've been announced and then, like, they're in production and they're showing all this footage and you've got nothing of me with it all. But um, even if they do the remaster, I would like to just experience the game as it is because I never, I never played the game. Um, it looks like I could really get into the game. It looks like it's one of those kind of like horror games, but it's like light-hearted horror games. Like you don't, like you're not meant to be too scared. You're, you know, like you're literally playing as a skeleton, a skeletal knight. Um, in this horror-themed world, so I, you know, it's not one of those like it's not like Silent Hill or Resident Evil, 
right? It's kind of like a light-hearted type of game. Um, and it looks like it'd be a, it could be a lot of fun playing as Sir Daniel. So, and, and honestly, I've heard of it in the past but never played it. And I feel like he is someone iconic on the PlayStation. Uh, I think he definitely deserves to be on there. So, put Sir Daniel on the system. Medieval, I guess Medieval 1. Definitely put him on there. That is it, guys. Wrapping up my 20... Uh, games that I think should be on the system whether I like or whether I want to play or whether I feel like you think of that when you think of the PlayStation 1 that is my list let me know if you have a list of 20 games uh, in the conversation below I'd like to see what your list is what your you know ideal list is I suppose uh, you can restrict yourself or not restrict yourself I just want to do it naturally um, that's quite difficult, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing it, so, yeah. Um, as for getting it, I'm not gonna get it at 90 quid, no. No, 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 uh, it'll have to go down in price. I probably won't get it for a very long time, unless they just, like, stop selling them like they did with the NES and, and the Super Nintendo, in which case, I guess I won't end up getting it, but you never know, like... Something like that is a long ways away for me anyway because I have literally no money. But I wanted to do this video because the PlayStation is my favorite console of all time. And, you know, I would love to have more experiences with the console. I'd like to play more games I haven't played. And I'd just like to have the system again. Um, just to kind of get a more retro feel playing it directly off the PlayStation would be great. So I'm glad they're still doing this. But at its current price, there's no, I'm not paying 90 quid for it. So hopefully, maybe they'll make it cheaper. If not, maybe if it goes down, they're still available. I'll eventually pick it up when it does get released at November the 3rd. But um, other than that, guys, if you enjoyed this video, and if you do like PlayStation games, I play a lot on this channel. So be sure to subscribe for Let's Plays of PlayStation games. Crash, Spyro, RPGs, you name it. I play a lot of playstation games so if you're new uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and like and i also stream so if you want to follow my streams twitch.tv slash gamers uk put the link in the description make sure to follow for that uh other social media twitter and facebook should be in the description below but other than that guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video